Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 How many of y'all would agree with me this morning that Jesus is your rock? Amen. Not only is he your rock, but he's your sword and your shield. We're going to try to sing a little bit of this this morning. If y'all would help me out. <sighs> Well, and I know Je Jesus is my rock, my rock, my sword and shield. And he's a wheel, and he's a wheel. I am the middle of a wheel. He guides my foot, he guides my foot, say. And he washed away all of my tears. And I know Je Jesus. My rock, my and he's a wheel in the middle. He guides my footsteps, and he wipes and he washes away. And I know Jesus is my rock, my rock, my sword and shield. Well, rock of ages, clear for me, yes. Let me hide myself in me. I get tired, I get weak, I get wrong, oh Lord. But I read in your word how you feed the little bitty bird. And I tell you, G Jesus is my rock, my rock, my soul and she. Well, rock of ages, yes, Lord, clap for me. Yes, let me hide. Myself in me, sure enough I get tired, sure enough I get weak, and I get wrong, oh Lord. But I read in your word how you feed the little bitty bird, and I tell you, G Jesus is my rock, my rock, my soul. Myself in me, sure enough I get tired, sure enough I get weak, and I get warm, oh Lord. But I read in your word how you feed the little bitty bird, and I tell you, G Jesus is my rock, oh my rock, my soul. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good how often and all the time. Find somebody close by this morning and say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love into. Amen. Amen. Certainly we serve an awesome God on this morning. How many of y'all would agree with me that God has been better to us than we have been to our very own selves? We didn't do it all right. We didn't get it all right. We didn't say it all right. But still, God decided to bless us anyhow. And some of us can say, preacher, what if God don't do anything else for me? God has already done enough. He's already brought me over hills and mountains and valleys and made ways out of no ways. And that's why we're here on this morning as a testament of the fact of the goodness of God. As we've heard it said already, and we'll say it again, he's not just good some of the time, but he's good all of the time. Can I tell you, when 
and you got more bills and you got money, guess what? God is still good. When you can't get what you want, guess what? God is still good. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed and you got a bad attitude, but guess what? God is still good. And his mercy is everlasting. And the Bible says that it's true shall endure unto all generations. That means no matter what season of your life you may be in, no matter what day of the week, no matter what's going on, our God is a good God. And he is worthy of not some of your praise, but he's worthy of all of your praise. And we're thankful for those of you that are here this morning, as well as for those of you that are visiting with us. We're so glad to have you here, as well as for those of you that are joining us via live stream. We're glad that out of all the stations you could have chose out there in Cyberland, that you chose to stop by and visit with us here this morning. And we would implore you that if you are nearby in our area, that you would stop by and visit us at your earliest convenience here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ, where the gospel is preached. You heard it from them. You ain't hear it from me. So come check it out for yourself. Amen. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. Is somebody still asleep? Did anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. I believe you came to the right place. This has already been um, heard. We'll be in the book of Isaiah chapter 57, and we will read verses 18 and 19, and then we'll go to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 5. Um, this message this morning was brewed out of the message that we talked about, we dealt with on last Sunday afternoon, and we're going to do a part two of that this Sunday afternoon, so if you're not busy, come on out and, and hear that this afternoon. On last Sunday evening, we dealt with how the mouth speaks for the heart. Um, and lo and behold, on Wednesday night in our Bible study, we end up getting right back on track with that same train of thought. And I've had people to reach out to me since we've had that class and said, Preacher, I'm glad that you said that because me, I'm talking about Christian folk, me as a Christian, I struggle with my conversation. I struggle with the words that I use. And if you won't say amen, I'll say amen. He said, I struggle with dealing with people that are hard to deal with. Anybody y'all deal with hard to deal with folk? You might be the one that's hard to deal with. Don't say that, you know. But, you know, uh, uh, all of us struggle from time to time with saying the right things. Not only with saying the right things, but knowing how to say what it is that we say. And it is important for us to understand as children of God that there is power in your mouth. There is power in the tongue. The Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those that love it, the Bible says, will eat the fruit thereof. So I want us to go this morning first in Isaiah chapter 57, verses 18 and 19. He says, I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. Verse number 19 says, I create the fruit of his lips. That's God talking. Listen, God says, I create the fruit of his lips. Peace, peace to him that is afar off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, I will heal him. And then we'll be in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 5. He said, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And I want to talk about this morning. Just, just look at somebody this morning and say, what are you talking about? You ever had to ask anybody that? What you talking about? Isaiah 57, 18, he says, I've seen his ways. And will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comforts unto him and his mourners. Verse 19, I, again, God speaking, create the fruit of his lips. Peace, peace to him who is afar off and to him who is near, says the Lord, I will heal him. God said, I create. The word create means to form, to fashion the fruit of his lips. How do you get God to work in your life? How do you get the power of God working in your own life? God said, I have linked my creative, miraculous power inseparably 
to the words that you speak in your life. If you talk about something long enough, church, after a while it's going to become your reality. God says, I create, I form, I fashion, I mold what you constantly, consistently pray for. What you constantly, consistently confess and what you praise for. Whatever you dare to utter, the word fruit means utterance. I create the utterance of your lips. What you speak, when you speak it, and if you keep holding to that confession, there's a verse in the Bible that says, hold fast to your confession. That hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to it. Man has the power to speak. Man has the power to talk and to confess. Man is God's only creation that he made that can talk. Just like God, he spoke the world into existence. There's no other creation that can talk. You might say a parrot can, but he can only repeat words. It cannot believe in his heart and speak with his mouth. I'm not just talking about saying whatever you want, but when you find something in the scripture and you believe it in your heart and then you begin to speak it, no matter what you see, I believe the word of God. And the word of God is greater than what I'm going through. Let God be true and every man be a liar. The Bible said, and man is the only creation that God made and gave the power to speak. God took speech away from the serpent in the book of Genesis. When Satan came in and he borrowed the body of the serpent, back then apparently serpents were able to walk. Imagine that. Some of us run from a snake that's crawling. Could you imagine a snake that's walking? And he was talking. And and, and it's in the Bible. The serpent said to Eve, he was talking to her. It could talk, and when God cursed it, he not only took his voice away, but he defeated it. He took his legs off, and it was crawling on his belly. And then he took the power to speak away from that devil. If a demon's going to talk, he's got to talk through somebody now. They have no legal right to say anything except in your mind through suggestions. And you don't have to listen to it. And God took speech away from that serpent, but he's not taking speech away from man. You are now, church, a composite of everything that you've been saying. Change your words, and you might see some things in your life begin to change. If you're going to become something different, change what you are confessing. Not only change what you are confessing, change the folk you're confessing to. Change what you're saying. God said, I gave you two ears and I gave you two eyes, but I only gave you one mouth. He wants you to listen twice as much as you talk. And he wants you to watch and see more than you talk. So, some of you, aren't you glad God didn't give your spouse two mouths like he gave them two ears and... And two eyes, praise God, somebody, praise God. Aren't you glad that he didn't give you yourself two mouths? Because the one mouth that you got gets you in a whole lot of trouble. Imagine if you had two of those jokers, uh, you're talking out the side of your neck now. You know, you know, you know, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You, words are able to change the atmosphere in your life. Hebrews 13 and 5, this is what changed my life. When I saw Isaiah 57 and 19, God said, I create. God said, I create the fruit of your lips. And then Hebrews 13 and 5 says, therefore by him, watch this word, let us continually. It's not that you just talk positive on Sunday morning. And talk positive words on Wednesday night. It's not that you talk positive just because you heard a good message on Sunday morning. It's not because you talk right, but continually let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God, which is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. 
That verse ought to change your life, church. And before I ever started preaching, I learned this, this secret. Just as a young preacher, church, I learned that the fruit of my lips has power. And it's not what other folks say about me, but it's what I say about me. Because let me tell you, if you live your life based on what folk got to say, you're going to be a miserable human being. Because folk going to always be, oh, you ain't nothing. Your daddy wasn't nothing. You ain't going to be nothing. Or I know your folk. Or I know where you're from. Y'all ain't about nothing. You can't do this and you can't do that. But when you get to a place where you stop listening to those outside voices and you learn how to lean and depend on what God has already said, for the Bible said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the eyesight of God. You might think I ain't worth nothing, but guess what? He thought I was to die for. God, I praise you that my steps are ordered. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's right out of your Bible. I praise you that you are leading me and guiding me. And the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. God, I praise you that I know my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And you're setting up resources in my life. Can I tell you, some of us worried about how we're going to make it through tomorrow and God already over in the next week working things out for us. That's why you are not worried about, look at somebody and say, I ain't worried about nothing. I ain't worried about nothing. Because my God is going to supply all of my needs. I know y'all been complaining just like I've been complaining about how high gas was just it is just these past few weeks. But guess what? You still went to the gas pump. You put that joker in there and you sat down and waited for it to fill up. Why? Because you will never see the righteous forsaken. No, it's seed begging for bread. Chicken last by $20 a pack. Guess what? You still eating them? Because God will supply your needs according to his riches in glory. I thank God that I'm favored. I thank God that I'm blessed. And I praise you, God, that I know that he that hath begun a good work in me is faithful to complete it. He's faithful to perform it. Now, see what, I'm, see what I'm doing, church? When you say things like that, you're speaking positive into your life. You got to get out of this habit that when things are going wrong in your life, that you start talking wrong. Yeah, you got to get out of this habit that when things don't look the way that you want them to look, well, I guess it ain't going to work out. I guess this ain't for me. I guess I ain't supposed to be here. You got to learn how to believe. The, the, the real question is, are you going to believe the report of man or are you going to believe the report of the Lord? The report of man will say that this sickness is unto death, but the report of God will say that this sickness is not unto death death. Whose report are you going to believe? Life and death is what you speak. It's what you confess. Continually, church, is life or death. The proverbial writer said in Proverbs 18 said that your words that death and life again are in the power of the tongue and you will eat its fruit. That is again. This is something that you've got to get a hold of. Mark chapter 11 says, Jesus said, speak to the mountain. Did he say, look at it? Did he say, get fearful of it and run away from it? Jesus said, speak to the mountain. Jesus said, speak to it, for surely I say unto you that whatsoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. What did he say? Say to the mountain, talk to the mountain. Now, God ain't telling none of y'all to go to Mount Vesuvius or Mount Everest and stand there and look at the mountain and say, move, 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 because you'll be standing there until Jesus come back, waiting on the mountain to move. But every single one of us got our own this mountain that's in our life. 
Every single one of us got our own hills, got our own valleys that we are trying to cross. And what God is saying is the power that I have given you is not to back down to your challenges, but to speak to the challenges and say, you know what? I can't, but I know a God that is able to do it. Your mountain knows your voice. Talk to the mountain. Whatsoever he says, you say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Here it is. Shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that the things that he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever things he said. What are you saying about yourself? Your child acting wayward, what are you saying about your child? Marriage trouble, what are you saying about your marriage? Financial, what are you saying about your economy and about your business? And uh, well, I'm going to lose everything. Things ain't going to work out. You got to get out of that attitude. As children of God, we got to stop living in a negative zone and begin to speak positive. I know it may not look good, but God is too good to bring me out here and leave me by myself. James said that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. See, you got to change even the way you pray to God. Now, Lord, here I am again. Lord, you know I'm going through. I just need you to come and do I don't know what you're going to do, but I just need you to come and help me out if you can. That don't sound like confidence. See, when you go before the throne of God, like, Lord, I know that I am your child. Lord, I am convicted that you are able to do the Lord. You made a way for my mama. You made a way for my daddy. You did it for them, Lord. I know you're still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Lord, I need you to make a way for me. And then when you pray, don't question whether or not God has the ability to do it. Why ask? If you don't believe, why ask if you really don't believe that God has the power to do what it is that you are asking him to do? We got to stop singing songs that we really don't believe. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. And then as soon as we find ourselves in the room, Lord, can you please help me out? Lord, 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 you just got through saying it. He's a way maker, and now you're trying to go and find every other route and every other route to get to where you are trying to go. You got to learn how to, how to believe what it is that you're singing, church. If you really believe that he's a rock in a weary land, you got to not just sing that. You got to stand on that when you're going through trials and tribulations. I serve a God. That's able to heal cancer. I serve a God that is able to keep you through disaster. He can move that mountain of addiction out of your life. But you've got to open your mouth and begin to give God words. Because he's a word God. And he works with words. Not only does he work with words, but he is the word. Joel said it like this. I like what Joel said. Joel said, let the weak say, I am strong. Somebody say that real quick. Say, I'm strong. I'm strong. Look, look, make a muscle and say, I'm strong. I'm let the weak say, I'm strong. Now, you know what? You just threw seeds out there. I'm going through, but I'm strong. I'm not quitting. I'm not failing. I'm not falling. I'm strong. I'm not going to be an alcoholic. I'm not going to be a drug addict. I'm not going to succumb to what I'm going through. I'm strong in Jesus Christ. I'm not going back. I'm strong. Now, when you start saying that, God hears what it is that you're saying. 
you got to go home and say, you know what? My marriage is strong. Yeah. My children are strong. My faith is strong. My home is strong. I don't care what I'm feeling, what I'm sensing, what my emotions are saying. I will believe the report of the Lord. I'm preaching to myself this morning. Whatever the devil sends, we got to learn how to send it back. You, you ever heard of return to sender? You got to learn how to return to sender sometime. You know what? I, 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 this is not the will of God for my life. I dare not have come this far in my walk with God to allow something like this to take me back to where it is that I'm from. The devil is a liar. Go back to where it is that you come from. The fruit of your lips. Oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever. He saw me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He knew me and I loved him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the, the cleansing flood. I love him. I got victory in Jesus. And when you understand the power of your words, the power of fast and negative, faithless words, sure, it can change your life. Some examples in the New Testament of people who got miracles because of what they said. You remember with the, the woman with the issue of blood? She was sick, and she used all of her money going to doctors, and they were not able to help her. And then she said within herself, she had to say something. If I could but touch the hem of his garment... I shall be made whole. But the miracle didn't start until she started saying something. And when she said it, God said, I've been waiting on you. I'll form it. I'll fashion it. I'll stop Jesus. And hundreds of people are touching him. But only one of them said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. You remember David and Goliath? Old Testament. A lot of times we read right over the story and we don't see the amazing lesson that there is about Goliath. Your Bible said that for 40 days and 40 nights, first thing in the morning, Goliath put on his armor, walked out into the battlefield and started talking trash. Humiliating the Hebrew God, humiliating the Hebrew people and talking trash. I'm talk talking big game, y'all. The first thing they heard in their tents as the sun came up was the voice of negative words. Curses and the defilement of their God coming out of the mouth of Goliath. And then the Bible said, as the sun was setting, he put his armor on Goliath and walked right back out there, you know. And the, the devil's pretty smart. He said, I'm going to get this first thought in them that's going to be negative. And the last thought before they go to bed is going to be negative. It's going to be words that I use to get into their mind. You know, somebody, somebody told you one time that, that words don't hurt. Yeah, they do. Yeah, words will tear you up. Yeah, words hurt sometimes more than a lick will. Yeah, yeah. You, and, and you know, you and you sometimes, you know, even though you may sometimes forget what happened, you'll always remember what somebody said to you. And not only what they said to you, but you'll remember how it made you feel. Words are powerful. The words that you use, church, they are important. You remember little David? Little David shows up. Think about David. He was a worshiper. And Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible said, speaking to yourselves in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And so church, when you are a praiser, you better not mess with a praiser. Let, let, let me tell you, you better not mess with a praiser. And, and, and this guy just shows up and he hears that giant out there talking all that trash early in the morning, talking trash late at night. And he asks a pretty important question. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? See, that's funny to us. But understand, circumcision was a mark of the covenant. 
God told Abraham, circumcise all the male children on the eighth day of their life, signifying that I have a covenant with them, that I fight their battles, and that I'm their provider, that I'm their source. What David was saying, you know, it's a biblical way to go off on folk. So the next time you get off on somebody and you want to say something, you just look at them and say, you old uncircumcised fillers. But the power of David is what he was really saying was, when I was eight days old and I received the mark of the covenant, I want you to know that I had more power than Goliath that's standing out there talking trash because all of heaven's angels are standing behind the covenant of the blood and the mark of the covenant. And then he starts saying, and the same God that helped me kill the bear and the lion Notice his confession. He said, he will deliver you into my hand. And he ran out there, y'all, and he defeated Goliath. But not without the power of confession. Ask your neighbor, what are you confessing this morning? You remember the Syrophoenician woman? Meaning she was a Gentile. She was not a Hebrew. She was not Jewish. She had no right to a blessing. And Jesus said to her when she said, please, master, my daughter is demon possessed. If you think that Satan is not targeting our young people, you got a different thing going on. Demonic spirits, demonic activity, it's all in the television, y'all. It's all on the radio. It's all on your social media. He is after them. He is trying to attack them. All these things are targeting young sons and daughters, sexual immorality. And every way Satan can destroy self-esteem and to get you to hate yourself. And this woman said, I cannot get my daughter free. She is grievously vexed with the unclean spirit. And Jesus said to her, it's not right for me to give the children's bread to dogs. Jesus said that. She said, everybody say she said, she said. But even the dogs get the crumbs, master. And Jesus made a phenomenal statement. He said, great is this woman's faith. Watch, and he said this, because of this saying, go your way, woman. Go your way. Go your way, church. And you see, this woman, in all account, didn't have no right to go to Jesus and ask him for nothing. But because she walked out on faith and said, you know what? I'm going to go anyhow. I got to get something. And can't nobody else do it for me but the Lord God Almighty. She stepped out and she got what she needed because of her confession. The daughter that's just about driven you to your wit's end, that's made you think, oh, God, will she ever get free? Will she ever get straight? Will she ever get sober? Will she ever get deliverance? Will she ever get on the path of life? Will it ever happen because of what you have said, woman? Go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. I've broken the oppression. I've broken the possession and the attack over your house. I want to tell somebody, we ought to go to our houses this morning after we leave church. We ought to go into our bedrooms and we ought to open our mouth and we ought to plead the blood of Jesus. Devil, you got to go. You cannot stay up in here. I feel like somebody we need to agree with me on that. We are not a bunch of victims. I refuse to preach until somebody really praises the Lord. I will not go a step further. You ought to march around your house seven times and say, devil, you got to vacate the premises. You got to get out of here. You ought to go home and just say, I don't care what the neighbors think. I don't care what anybody thinks. You ought to open up your mouth and say, this house will be a house of blessing. This house is going to have the blood on the doorpost. This house is an anointed house. And God's presence abides in this house. Your words 
have power. What kind of songs are you singing in your midnight hour? Y'all remember when Paul and Silas were in jail? Didn't have nobody to go there. Bear Johnny Cochran went around then, ain't it? They didn't have nobody to show up and say, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. You know, they, they didn't have any of that. They didn't have nobody to show up. They didn't have no lawyer to go to bail. But they were in there and they were locked up in prison. And instead of being like me, God, why in the world am I here? Lord, I've been doing what you told me to do. Why am I in here? Lord, I said what you wanted me to say. Why am I in here? But you find the men of God. What I'm saying, you know what? You get the song book and turn to 398. You, you get the song book and turn to 118. And you sang a song. And guess what? While you sang a song, I'm going to pray unto God. And let me tell you, you got to be careful about the folk that you got around you when you're going through your midnight hour. Some folk will tell you, you ought to give up. You've been going to that church. God ain't did nothing for you yet. He ain't made a way for you yet. But you ought to say, you know what? All the days of my appointed time, I will wait upon the Lord. I'm going to wait until my chains come. I know God may not show up up on today, but I'm going to praise God until he shows up. I'm going to praise God until he makes a way. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I will believe the report of the Lord. Now, why, why is God blessing them and he ain't blessing me? Why is that coming out of your mouth? Why, why are they getting this? And I'm not, why is that coming out of your mouth? Malachi 2 and 17, he said, God said, I am weary with your words. God said, I'm weary with the stuff that's coming out of your mouth. You know, some of the stuff we say in just wearing God out. I ain't talking about worldly folk. I'm talking about Christians. Some of the things that we say are wearing God out. God has to do a double take. You still a Christian? You know? <laughs> okay, yeah. Just checking, just making sure. We got to be careful with the kinds of words that we are uttering in our life. Folk going to talk about you enough. You ought not be talking about yourself. What 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 it say? You know, and, and, and going along with that, folk can always have something to say, but the thing is, just make sure, like we said this morning, ain't no truth to what it is that they're saying. Now, see, some of us got the excuse to say folk just talking, then some of us can say, hey, we asked the given folks something to talk about. Because it's not just good to praise God with your mouth while you are in the corporate assembly and worship. There is a name I love to hear. Singing praises unto God. But then in our daily life, we give God a new last name, if you catch my drift. We say everything but those things that are befitting of a Christian. And we got to be honest enough with ourselves to say, you know what? I struggle with that. Because none of us in here, because we, as we read, uh, the Bible said, if you are able to bridle your tongue, you're able also to bridle the whole body. None of us in here, as of yet, have been able to control this thing. It gets out of hand. It goes before your brain knows what it is that you've actually said. The elder gave the example in Bible study this morning, you know, you in traffic. And you're trying to get over and somebody swipe you off. And instead of you saying, hallelujah. <laughs> there are other things that come out of here. I'm trying to be real with y'all this morning. Because this is something from the pulpit to the back door. This is something that we all got to work on. Because you cannot say that you are a child of God. And then the words that you use are everything except that which is befitting of a child of God. I'm on my way to heaven, but I just cussed somebody out at Walmart. I'm on my way to heaven, but I got into it with my spouse this morning. I called them everything but a child of God. I'm on my way to heaven, but I got into it with somebody on my job. And I bled, oh, I told them, I got them told. They 
do you always have to have something to say? Sometimes the best thing you can do Sometimes, in order for us to maintain the relationship that we have, I, I call you back in a couple of days after I get my mind together. Yeah. 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 But the most, the worst thing that you can do is to just let this thing back to you. Come on, Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Because your emotions is what's going to get you in trouble. Yeah. 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 Going this way. And then as soon as somebody on the job start talking about some mess, we right in the middle of the conversation. Conversation that had nothing to do with us, but we adding a little bit of this and adding a little bit of that. Well, I think, and you should have did this and you should have did that. Sometimes, church, it's best if we don't intervene in certain things. Because there's power in what you say. And you've been professing Christ all this time. And you know, folk are already looking for you to fall. Oh, you know, she said she always great. Well, I heard her say this, and I heard her say that. And she's supposed to be all this, and they're supposed to. And folk are looking for anything that they can point out on you. That's why it's important that we watch the things that we say. That we watch the conversations that we get. Ask somebody what you've been talking about. What you, have you been trying to tell somebody about Jesus? Have you been trying to be an encourager to somebody that's going through? Or are you a negative Nancy, a uh, negative Ned? Everything signs up going on, uh, well, it don't look good. Folk get sick, child, you know, she ain't looking good at all. I went over there. And she looking bad. I don't, I don't know if you I don't know how much long she gonna live. We gotta stop talking like that. Children of God don't talk like that. Children of God going now, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am already healed. It matters what you say. When you're going through your dark times, again, even in your midnight hour, what kind of songs are you singing? Lord, woe is me. I don't know why I got to go through so much. But you've been asking God to increase your faith. Lord, I want to go to another level. Lord, I want, I want something new in my life. In order for that to happen, God got to challenge you. He got to challenge you in those weak areas of your life. And if some of us be honest, the weakest area in our life is with our mouth. It's with our tongue. It's with the thoughts that we have that turn into the words that we say. Because ain't nothing just came out. You know that, right? It can only come out if it was already, first of all, in you. So you got to be careful getting folk mad. Because when somebody get mad, they're going to tell you what they really think. You know, what, what they, they say, a drunk man tell the truth. Yeah, so, you know, somebody, you know, they'll tell you exactly what you didn't know. You got to be careful. Not just what you say, 
but how you say it. There's a tone for you to use with people. Some of us got to change the tone that we talk to people. The tone that you use with this person ain't the same tone that you can use with another person. Some people are taking it the wrong way. You got to learn how to say things to people. And then what are you saying to yourself? When you're going through, when you're dealing with life challenges, or you, oh, it's all about a pity party and woe is me and this and that, or are you remembering the word of the Lord? Or are you calling back what it is that the Lord has already said? You remember when Jesus was out in the wilderness and the devil came to him, tempting him on those three different occasions? All Jesus said was, it is written. Yeah. It is written. Every time he came, it is written. That's why you got to keep it. It is written. A thus say of the Lord on the inside of you. So when you find yourself in opposition, fighting with the devil, and guess what? You're going to have to fight the devil. Some of y'all say, preacher, preacher, I'm in a battle right now. I just came out of round one. Round two is on the way. We are all going to find ourselves doing battle, and it's all about, are you going to remember what thus say of the Lord? Don't allow what's going on around you and what's being said to be the determining factor of how you are going to react to your situation. Remember the word of the Lord. He who thinks about what he says before he says it is a wise individual. Take time next time and say, you know what? Before I say it, let me think about it. Maybe that's not the right thing to say. And can I tell you and be honest with you? This is not something that you're going to be able to accomplish by yourself. You're going to need the help of God to help you to bridle your tongue, to help you to control your tongue. You've been trying all this time. You still ain't been able to control it. You need God's help to be able to control it. Ask God, Lord, I need more of your spirit in my life. Lord, I need more of you in my life so that I won't be so quick to utter these words that I ought not utter and say things that I ought not say. And if you need help with that, God is standing ready to help you with it this morning. My brother and my sister, if you are struggling with it this morning, God is ready, willing, and able to help you with your struggle. God is ready, willing, and able. See, first thing is you got to keep your mind on Jesus. That's why he said, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on their problems. Whose mind is stayed on me. You won't lose your peace if your mind is stayed on Jesus. You won't lose your cool if your mind is stayed on Jesus. Keep your mind on Jesus, and he'll lead you to where it is that you're trying to go. If you're struggling this morning, we serve a God that's ready, willing, and able to help you to get over what it is that you're struggling with. For those of you that are here on this morning, and you're not maybe struggling in that area of your life, but you're struggling in a different area of your life, there is no struggle that you have that God is not able to help you to overcome. Somebody in here can give you their own testimony about the things that God has brought them over and God, the things that God has helped them to overcome. And God is no respect to a person. What he has done for others, God will do the same thing for you. If you need help today, all you got to do is request that God will give you the help that you are standing in the need of. But you got to ask in faith. Don't let your heart waver. Don't let your mind waver. Believe that God can do what it is that you are asking him to do. For those that may be here, maybe you're watching us, and at this time you don't have a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You find yourselves outside of the ark of safety. You are in opposition of God. Come to Jesus this morning by hearing what it is, that you believe, that hearing the word of God, that Jesus lived, that he died, and on the third day he rose again with all power in his hands. After you've heard the word of God, you must believe what it is that you have heard. Repent of your sins and confess Christ as your Savior. Be buried with him in baptism, and the Lord himself has promised that he will add you to his body. Praising God and having favor with all the people, the Lord 
adds to the church daily, daily, such as should be saved. If you're struggling and you need help, come and let us pray for you this morning. For the Bible says that the prayers of the righteous, they avail this much. But I believe that this is a prayer that will fit every single one of us in here this morning. Lord, help me to control my mouth. If you're standing in the need of prayer or if you're subject to the invitation, you have that opportunity to respond as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Lord, help me to walk around, you know, while I run this way. Well, I'm asking, Lord, help me to walk around, you know, while I Thursday, uh, for the loss of their mother, so we want to remember them in prayer. And 
fact. Uh, do we have any other prayer requests at this time? And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer for uh, Sister Trudy. And we're going to thank God for adding to our number here. Amen. Brother Willie Beckham. Come, Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this day. Lord, we come with thanksgiving in our heart for all that you've done. We're thankful, Lord, for your word that was preached this morning. And we pray that it go forth as good seed sown in good soil. Bring forth fruit in due time. Lord, we're so thankful for just having this opportunity to make our own peace calling at election year. Lord, we're thankful for Sister Trudy asking for prayers. We pray that you bless her as she travels uh, on the airlines and plays with the pallets and uh, that uh, the journey will be safe to and fro her destination. Pray for her cousin, the Chamnitz family. Uh, Father, we do have those who just continue to go through those types of struggles in life and the loss of loved ones. And we know that, that that feeling can linger. But Lord, let us know and help them to know and understand that you're close to them during their time of bereavement. Uh, we're praying for the uh, families and the loss of their mother. Just be close to them as well. And Father, we're so grateful that uh, your word penetrates the heart of Brother Baker this yes, morning. Yes, sir. Amen. He's seen the need yes. to obey you. Lord, we're thankful, we're blessed. We pray that you continue to hold us in the hollow of your hand as we journey through this life. In Jesus' name, we humbly ask. Yes. Because he is our Savior. He's our Savior. And he's our mediator. Yes. Let the church say, Amen. Yeah. 
I'm going all the way. Yeah. Said no turning back. I'm going all the way. Yeah. No turning back. Oh, I'm going all the way. Yes. Hey, say that I'm going all the way with the Lord. You know that I'm going all the way with the Lord. All the way. Oh, I'm going all the way. Yes. I'm going. I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way. Yes. Say that I'm going all the way with the Lord. You know that I'm going all the way with the Lord. Upon the thought of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I baptize you to the believe for the remission of sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. Amen.